Thanks, Bill. We're going to give you a little update what we have, uh, a case involving uh, Ms. Jennifer Ann May, or me, um, that's generated some interest. Basically, the St. Petersburg Police Department responded um, to the 511 7th Street North at about 11.04 on uh, Saturday night. Uh, when we got there, there was a call of a person behind a vacant residence. Looks like they were sleeping. Officers arrived about 10 minutes later to determine that their victim there, who's been identified as Mr. Shannon A. Griffin, um, was uh, deceased from uh, multiple gunshot wounds he received uh, at that particular location. Uh, obviously, our investigation began. Um, we worked that case throughout the night. Investigators um, uh, remained on scene until about 5.30 a.m. Um, it, it was apparent to us there was a firearm that was left at the scene, some victims, some of the uh, suspect's clothing was left at the scene that uh, it, was, it looked like a possibility of a uh, robbery was the motive. What we have since learned is that um, our victim, Mr. Griffin, had a dialogue with uh, a Jennifer Ann May, or me, um, that had started within the last week. Uh, they exchanged several uh, back and forth on a, a social networking site on the internet, um, led up to a series of phone calls, um, where she enticed him to come down and meet with her at this particular address. This, this particular address is a vacant house. Um, Mr. Griffin uh, told his family that he was leaving to meet a female uh, about 10 o'clock that particular night, and uh, it was left on a scooter. Um, he drove, apparently drove to this location. We determined that he was probably met by the female out in front of the residence, and they walked behind the residence where he was been accosted by two other individuals, a Laron Rayford and a Lamont Newton. Uh, the purpose of their confrontation with him was robbery. The female, uh, Jennifer Mee, uh, continued to walk, but she was obviously the, the set-up person in this robbery. Um, it looks like the robbery, apparently, uh, the, the Mr. Griffin struggled. Uh, during that struggle, uh, he was uh, eventually shot. It removed were some of his wallet, keys, and some small cash items. Um, as our investigation continued to unfold on Sunday morning, uh, we started backtracking some of the phone calls and determined that uh, uh, through investigation that the three people were involved. We started looking for them about 1.30 in the afternoon. We found two females, uh, Miss Me here as well as another female that we're not identifying. She's a witness in this case. Um, they were brought to the police station, uh, interviewed, um, and at about 4 o'clock that, that Sunday afternoon, we also found the two males that were involved in this case they were brought down to the station. It was determined that the one female uh, didn't have anything to do with the case to, to our knowledge at this particular point, but uh, uh, Miss Me and the uh, Mr. Rayford and Mr. Newton all made several admissions to the fact that they, this was a setup, it was a robbery, and it was a robbery gone awry. Um, they were since charged, all with first degree murder. In this particular case, because the, the person was killed in a, in a forcible commission of a felony, it became felony murder, which is a first degree felony and all, all the subjects were charged um, late yesterday evening into the night and uh, were transported to the county jail. So at this particular time, if you have any specific questions, we'll try and address those. Major Kavas, if we can maybe fill in a little bit more details, if there's anything that I missed that he'd like to add. We'll go ahead and ask, you guys can ask some questions, and we'll be more than glad to answer some. Go ahead. Does it look like this is the first time that they had done this, or had they robbed other people this way? We don't have any information that they had done any other robberies prior to this one. Uh, everybody involved has minimal or no criminal histories to speak of, so at this point we don't believe there's any other victims. Was me aware that someone had been shot during this robbery? She was aware as it was progressing. Uh, the altercation occurred between the three subjects as she was walking away and she was in the vicinity when the gunshots were fired. Did she say if she knew they had a gun? She did. She pointed out the individual. I'm not going to go into exact specifics on that, but she pointed out who brought the firearm there. She knew the firearm was going to be utilized in the armed robbery. Well, she faced different charges because she didn't actually fire the gun or because she lured him? No, she faces the exact same charges as two other individuals. It just depends on how the state attorney's office continues on with any type of agreements down the end. But she'll get charged like she did with first-degree murder, and uh, it'll be handled through the state attorney's office. 
How did she lure him to the house? Did she say anything specific? Did she promise anything specific? That's something we're still looking at, but there was a promise of something. We're still looking at that angle. I don't want to release it at this point, but like I said, she made phone calls back and forth. They had started on the social network within the week. The phone call started going, and this is the first time they actually met. Do you know what site that they were communicating on? That's one thing we're trying to confirm right now. We do have an idea, but like I said, we're still trying to confirm it and until we get the subpoenas and things of that nature. We're not going to release that information. Is she cooperative? She was. All three individuals were, were cooperative in a sense, correct? It looks like so from some of the social networking sites that there are references to drugs. Any indication that there was some drug activity involved in all of this? None that we can see at this point. Like I said, our victim in this case has no criminal history whatsoever, and there's nothing to allude to. He had told his family or his uncle prior to leaving that he was going to meet a female. So there's nothing to allude at this point that there was any kind of narcotics involved. Jennifer, show any remorse? Uh, she was emotional uh, throughout the interview, so I can do say that. What can you tell us about the victim, Mr. Richard? Uh, from what we can tell is, and this is mainly from his family, is at some point in the last couple of years he came down here from the Mississippi Gulf Coast. Uh, I'm not exactly sure where he lived, but he worked at the Walmart in Pinellas Park for the last year. He was apparently on vacation for this week, and he was living with an uncle or a cousin in the uh, North St. Petersburg off of MLK Street North in an apartment complex in that area. Uh, he's kind of a social introvert, was on the computer quite a bit, and he befriended... Um, uh, Miss Me at this point, that's how the conversation began. Do you know she befriended him for the purposes of the robbery or? If, from what we can tell initially, he actually friended her on a website. Was there any mention of her previous notoriety uh, at all? None that we can tell. Like I said, without going into specifics, and this will continue to unfold, and, and when we get the information back from the certain companies, we'll probably have a clearer idea of what was said back and forth. But at this point, other than what was said to us by the uh, subjects that were involved in this, uh, we really don't know. Do you know how Lee was connected to the other two people who were arrested? What was that relationship? Uh, she was kind of, in, I guess, recently kind of bouncing from place to place, and she had been living in an apartment with these two individuals. There was some uh, notation she might have been dating one, but her current boyfriend apparently is in a Pinellas County Jail, so we really didn't verify that aspect. Yeah, they all live together. Just from our perspective, too, I, this is a cautionary note for those who are out there looking at these social network sites. I mean, obviously, we've had identity thefts and we have other issues coming up as a result of this, frauds and other things, but this is the, the far end of the spectrum here on something that can happen. Um, obviously, they didn't know each other. We found no connection that they've ever met other than through this networking site within this last week, and this meeting was set up and arranged. So to those out there that are parents or friends or whatever, um, the message is, you know, be, be careful who you're uh, having a conversation with online. You just never know. Anything else we can address? Who was holding the weapon? We're still working on that. Was, was he robbed and then he struggled with, the, with these individuals? Or? Well, we're not going to go into the depths of the statements, but I will tell you that the two males were the main participants in the actual robbery. Again, like I said before, the felony murder rule allows for somebody to be charged if they conspire to do that or at the actual act when the, when the thing occurs, like she was. She was well aware this was going on and knew about it. Regardless of who was holding the gun, in the eyes of the law, they all get charged the same. Can you say if he was robbed before the shooting occurred or after the shooting? We don't know. We're going to continue to investigate that. How much cash was the My understanding was a very small amount of money, less than $50, $60. Were they expecting something more, perhaps? Reasonably... Not that we know of. Have you taken the computers from both of them to see what's going on? To see what the exchanges were? And they're just continuing to work, and, and the, when they were located, they were at a third party's residence, so they're continuing to try to investigate things and, and that nature, so it'll be helpful as we continue to go on. Okay. Sound good? Everybody good? All right. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you. Can I get the stone of the detective? It's on the paper. Kovacev. Thank you. Yep. Were they displaced from Mississippi because of Katrina? I don't know. That, that could be a question for the family. We don't know. I just know one of my detectives provided that information that he did come down at some point to live with a cousin or an uncle, that he was from the Mississippi Gulf Coast. But like I said, he's worked at Walmart for at least a year, so we don't know the exact time he came down here.
And I should commend the, the folks involved in this investigation. If you saw this occurred Saturday night at about 11 o'clock, and by Sunday late afternoon we had this case closed. And so the men and women who worked on this all night did a great job. Um, the, the one thing that wasn't really asked is, you know, in, in my opinion, when I was asking about the case, um, no one reported any gunshots at that particular time at 10 o'clock on Saturday night when we think about this thing occurred. But during our neighborhood canvas, it was apparently that, that some folks had heard gunshots there at that particular time. So our investigations kind of showed that the incident actually occurred there. And uh, again, um, it's one of those things I would encourage people. If they're hearing things going on in their community, they know that it's wrong, please call us and let us know. Um, you know, uh, and as a result, these people got arrested, but it would have helped our investigation to have this information sooner. What linked you to them? What was it? There's, well, there's a couple of things. First of all, we started looking at the cell phone angle, and we were able to get some information that was garnered from there. But also, we did get investigative leads that came throughout the day that individuals did call in and provide us the information we needed to actually locate them. Okay, thank you all. all right, we appreciate it.